Well, hello everybody. I am Shitan Shu from Dream Abroad, and in this video, we're going to talk about some big updates. These updates are so important because these are related to traveling to Canada. The government of Canada has finally confirmed few dates and uh, some restrictions as well, so we can talk about them in detail. Well, actually, I've got a couple of good news and a couple of bad news, so let's just talk about those bad news. Uh, very quickly knock them off and then we'll talk about the good news so the first bad news is what we were actually expecting that the india canada direct flights have been banned for 30 more days so finally we have a date yes we talked about this in the last video that air canada has confirmed it in their website that they won't uh, be booking any flights until the end of july but government of canada has confirmed the date as 21st of july until when the flights would be banned between India and Canada. However, however, all those people who are in Pakistan can now travel. So all those people would be really happy, I'm sure. You just need to get, get a negative RT-PCR test report and then obviously you can uh, you know, travel to Canada through the direct flights. You can book your flights uh, from now onwards. And the second update is not related to Canada, but related to Ethiopia. You would say Ethiopia. It's the first time I'm actually referring to that country. So why am I talking about this? Basically, all those people who were affected by this uh, travel ban had an option to travel to Canada via a, diff a third country. Many people were choosing Ethiopia or Serbia. Now, Ethiopia was a good option because it offered visa on arrival and e-visas to Indians. So many people were choosing that route, but Ethiopia has temporarily suspended its e-visas and visas on arrival effective 18th of June. So the date has gone past. So basically, you would not be able to choose that option if you want to travel to Canada through Ethiopia. Okay, now the good news. All those people who have got a valid COPR can finally travel to Canada as of today. So if you've got a valid COPR, you can travel to Canada. All those people who, whose travel documentations or COPR uh, might have expired, all those people, what to do? So for all those people, I'll take you to the official press release for that. And I'll also provide a link in the description box below as usual, so that you can also check it out. So here they've clearly mentioned that starting June 21st, any foreign national who holds a valid confirmation of permanent residence may travel to Canada. Under the previous rules, foreign nationals who held a valid COPR issued on or before March 18, 2020 were exempt from Canada's travel restrictions. Those who held a valid COPR issued after March 18 could only come to Canada if they met another exemption. Now, all those people who might have got an expired COPR or who have got a COPR that's expiring sometime soon. For them, we finally have an update here. It's been said here that Many applicants were not able to travel to Canada before their COPRs expired due to the travel restrictions or other COVID-19 related considerations. ISCC has been working with applicants who were already exempt from travel restrictions to reissue them a COPR for applicants with expired COPRs issued after March 18, 2020. More information on when and how to obtain a new COPR will soon be available on the ISCC's website. So there's more good news in this store. I'm pretty sure that all those people who have got an expired COPR or whose COPR is expiring sometime soon, who might not still be able to travel to Canada because of the India, Canada travel ban or any other reason, uh, would be either contacted by ICC themselves or they can raise a web form and inform ICC about it. And obviously ICC is going to do something about it now. I know it's been a long, long wait. You guys got the COPR, you were not able to travel to Canada. Things have improved a lot here lately in Canada and hopefully uh, you should be able to travel to Canada sometime soon. It's summertime, we are waiting for you. The atmosphere is going to be great. Alright guys, now it's time for the second good news. Finally, the date when the hotel and the home quarantine would be lifted has been announced. Yes, I told about that in the earlier video that Canada would be lifting those restrictions for all those people who are fully vaccinated. I'll provide the link to that video in the description box and in the i button above so you can check it out. Finally, we have the date for the travel restrictions that are being lifted. Effective July 5th, which means all those people who are fully vaccinated and have a gap of 14 days from the second dose of the vaccination and the day they're actually traveling, there should be a gap of 14 days. 
So in that case, you would not need to do the hotel and the uh, home quarantine of rest pending 11 days. So that's the good news. Finally, we, the date is confirmed. It's July 5th. So this is the official press release. I'll provide the link in the description box below. If you want, you can check it out. Here they have clearly mentioned that the gap between the second dose and when you're flying should be at least 14 days. Also, they've mentioned those vaccines, Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson. AstraZeneca is called Covishield in India. So it's confirmed, it's uh, mentioned there that Covishield is approved. Also, it's very important that your vaccination certificate should be in English or French or translated in any of these languages. Something very important mentioned here that fully vaccinated travelers must also be asymptomatic, have a paper or digital copy of their vaccination documentation and provide COVID-19 related information electronically through Arrive Can app prior to arrival in Canada. They must still present a suitable quarantine plan just in case it's been decided that they are not exempt from the quarantine. So basically, Arrive Can app is very important. Before traveling, you have to update your quarantine plan just in case if you're not exempt uh, from quarantine, if they decide at the border that no, you're not exempt, uh, you'll have to follow that quarantine plan. And of course, you have to update uh, your digital copy of uh, your COVID-19 vaccination, both the vaccination certificates. So that is very important. And of course, you have to carry along with, uh, you, with you that vaccination certificate that you have got the two doses of the approved vaccines. Now, some questions are still alive and some questions have been answered. It's been clearly mentioned now in the press release that all those people who are not fully vaccinated would still need to do the hotel quarantine and the 14-day uh, home quarantine as well. Also, many people had questions about their children. Obviously, no one in the world below 12 years of age would have got the COVID-19 vaccine. So yes, the government has confirmed that all those children would still need to quarantine for 14 days in the home and they can skip the hotel quarantine. So mind it very clearly, all those children, if their parents are fully vaccinated, they can still go out, but children need to stay at home for 14 days and they can skip the hotel quarantine. Anyways, guys, uh, this is it for this video. This was all the information I wanted to share through this video. If you have people who are willing to travel to Canada sometime soon, please share this information with them. I'm sure they would be very happy. And all those people who haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please go and click the subscribe button. It's very important, guys. It's free, of course. Just click that button. Only 30% of the uh, people who actually watch my videos regularly have subscribed, which means that if I actually had everyone subscribe to the channel, this channel would have over 1 million subscribers. So I request you, please, please, please go on to click that subscribe button. Thanks a lot for watching this video.